Good to see you again. It's good to see you, Dave. Last time that we spoke, I didn't thank you for perks of being a, a wallflower, by the way, so thanks, man. I, I guess you're welcome? Yeah, no. I mean, it wasn't me. Well, but you were a big <laughs> part of that film, and that's, we still talk about that movie on the air, and one of our that. favorites. I'm so. thankful for perks of being a wallflower in a lot of ways. I've been thankful for that book since it helped me when I was a 14-year-old kid, and I'm still thankful for it now and the ways that it's been such a blessing in my life and career. And let's talk about you right now, Fantastic Beast, Credence. Let's do it. Man, what a character. When you, I heard that you, you're a huge Potter fan. In fact, you called yourself a Potter nerd back in the day, maybe still to, today. Nerd, geek, there's really no language too extreme for my level of obsession with Harry Potter. So when you are cast in this film, your reaction, what happened that day? It was, um, somewhere between a religious experience and psychological break. I love that, I love uh, that. It was truly joyous, a truly joyous moment in my life. I mean, it, it, it's, more than, it's more than you ever really even allow yourself to dream as a deep, deep Harry Potter fan uh, that you could ever be in a film that was written by J.K. Rowling, I mean, it's, too good to be true. I can't really describe the feeling. It's it's like butterflies, but they're they're more aggressive. Did you get to meet J.K. while working on this? I did. Yeah. What was that like? Unbelievable. It's like um, you know, it's like uh, it's like meeting Dumbledore. You know, it's like I mean, it's like it's so strange. It's so strange to look at someone for the first time and be understanding how formative they've been in your life and who you are. Um, it's like meeting someone who had such a hand in your upbringing for the first time when you're 23 is sort of a strange moment. I, I would probably scream and yell if you I- You like look into her eyes and you're like, wow, what have you, what have you done to me? You've, you've shaped the course of my entire life, you know? And look what she continues to do for us. I want to talk about your character, Credence. What were some of the challenges for you to play this, I mean, really outstanding role in, in this story? What, what were some of the things that you... Um, I found it really sad to uh, daily confront the reality of abuse. Uh, the reality that there are people all over the world who are, uh, you know, the survivors of violence, um, emotional abuse, psychological abuse, that this is something that uh, we as human beings are still working out. Um, how to not create an other and then to victimize that other uh, instead of dealing with ourselves. Um, and it's a pandemic, you know, and it's really, and it's happening all the time. So I guess playing this character, the biggest challenge was sort of having to deal with the reality, because it's, it's easy to sort of not pay attention to the fact that that's happening in so many of the homes across our country, or, you know, but it's real and it's something that, that we have to deal with. So yeah, a lot of my, my um, research for the character was talking to people who uh, underwent sort of abuse similar to what Credence goes through and um, people who have gone through really terrible experiences of the foster care system, uh, and yeah, I worked with this really great organization called Childline in the UK, who are, they're a response and outreach program for kids who are being hurt. There are organizations like that that exist all around the world where you can find um, support networks uh, for people who are survivors of abuse. Um, and I'm really grateful Ch Childline let me sort of talk to some of their responders and then also talk to some, some survivors also talking to some people in my life who are survivors in a, a similar way, like a really similar way to Credence that specifically in foster care, you know, the trauma of, of losing or never having your, your biological family, um, but then the process of going from family to family and sometimes these people come at foster care with the wrong intentions. And so all of that was the hardest part, dealing with that, confronting that, because I, I just found that I um, really feel, you know, this, this desperate, uh, urgent, problem in our world. And it's on microcosms in homes, and then it's the macrocosms of how we're rejecting each other as populations of people across the world. And, you know, people are homeless by the tens of millions. And, you know, the, these problems come back to the 
right? They say like terror starts at home. It's like that that root uh, that we create, just parent to child, parent to child, caretaker to kid, again and again, and these patterns we repeat. I don't know. That was hard. No, man, that was awesome. <laughs> I, not, you're, I agree with you completely, thousand percent. That's why Hillary's going to win on everything else was so, yeah, everything. That was yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, Cast yeah. your best spell, right. your your ballot spell. Yeah, that's what uh, we need. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>